All ships must carry certain emergency and life-saving equipment. This equipment must meet minimum standards and must be properly tested. In this video, I will discuss this life-saving equipment that should be present on board ships. One thing to keep in mind is not all ships have all of this life-saving equipment I mentioned in this video. It depends on the ship type number of passengers and crew on board and the requirement pertaining to safety regulations that determine the type and quantity of life-saving equipment available. Number 1 is the lifeboats. These are the primary life-saving equipment used when the crew and passengers are supposed to abandon the ship and need out-of-water support. They must be available in sufficient quantity and support the required capacity and size such that the total number of persons on board can be evacuated from either port or starboard. This is done so that in case the ship is capsizing to one side, say port, the lifeboats can be lowered from the starboard side and everyone on board can be saved. In small vessels, such as harbor and river crafts open lifeboats and semi-enclosed lifeboats are used. For all large vessels plying in oceans totally enclosed lifeboats are provided. This is done to ensure better protection against the weather and sea. They are fitted with small diesel engines for self-propulsion at a speed of around 6 knots and carry fuel for 24 hours of operation. Number 2 is the life rafts and inflatable buoyant apparatus. These are the secondary means of life-saving equipment on ship. Inflation of life rafts is done with carbon dioxide from the storage cylinder packed within the raft inside a container. They may be launched via davits, cradles or free-fall racks. Davit launched rafts are launched usually from a single davit. They are first inflated on board, boarded and then lowered into the water. Life rafts are subjected to a number of tests such as drop test, jump test, weight test, towing test etc. Some additional tests like damage tests, inflation test, pressure test, seam strength test are peculiar only to inflatable life rafts. Number 3 is the rescue boats. These are small, lightweight boats designed with the objective of rescuing people in distress and towing the survival crafts, such as life rafts and buoyant apparatus. They are designed as such to be launched in minutes and must remain stable when recovering a person in the water from either side of the boat. They are usually davit launched and come in different shapes and sizes. The material used for construction is usually fiberglass with the addition of inflated rubber buoyancy chambers for extra stability. Number 4 is life preservers or personal flotation devices. Like rescue boats, personal flotation devices also come in a variety of shapes, sizes and designs. They may be either of solid buoyancy type with closed cell foam or may be inflatable. Inflation can be done either orally or carbon dioxide cartridge or combination of both. We've all seen such life jackets present under the seats of every commercial airliner. Life jackets are fitted with whistles to grab the attention of rescue people as well as a light which illuminates as soon as it touches the water to help in easy spotting people in distress. Alternatively, a chemical light stick and a reflective material may be used. The life jackets are also subjected to various tests like temperature cycling, buoyancy, fire, stability and strength. These are the common life-saving equipment present in all small and large vessels, you may have spotted them even on the sides of swimming pools. They are fitted around the perimeter of ships weather deck and are meant to be thrown rapidly to a person overboard. Next in our list is the survival suits. Why did people die despite wearing life jackets after the Titanic sank? The answer is hypothermia. Well, that's where the survival suits become increasingly important. They are also called immersion suits and are used as protection overalls. Their main function is to reduce the body heat loss of a person in cold water and hence prevent death due to hypothermia. Typical designs allow the body temperature to prevent falling below 35 degrees Celsius for 6 hours for a person in the water at 0 degrees Celsius. 
Number 6 is the communication systems. When we have around 8,800 people on board, it becomes a mammoth task to communicate and alert each and every passenger and crew members of the situation and dictate the necessary steps and instructions to be followed. Any miscommunication or lack of communication can have disastrous ramifications. Hence these systems also form a part of life-saving equipment. All ships are fitted with general alarm systems so as to alert and summon the crew to their fire stations or boat stations. Passenger vessels are to be equipped with public address systems. Communication systems also include portable very high frequency VHF, radios, commonly referred to as walkie-talkies, and are provided for emergency crew communications. Next is the Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacons EPIRB. How does a rescue ship reach the exact location of a disaster? It's quite obvious it cannot be done visually as the distances are too large for visual navigation. Then how does the rescue team reach the exact site of the disaster? This happens with the aid of geographic coordinates sent via radio signals to a satellite receiver by EPIRB so that rescue efforts can be initiated at the earliest at the exact location of the disaster. These are buoyant electronic devices which float on water when a ship sinks and begin transmitting radio signals with geographic coordinates. Distress Signal if you've watched the movie Titanic you must have seen the crew sending distress signals with the use of flares. Distress signals are typically parachute flares which can be spotted by nearby vessels and rescue personnel and determine the location of the ship in distress. Three rockets should be fired vertically. It must be ensured that the parachute flares ejection happens after a height of 300 meters. Also, the rate of descent should not exceed 5 meters per second and should sustain burning for at least 40 seconds. They should also function efficiently when projected at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. It should be established by laboratory tests that the average luminous intensity of flame material, which should burn uniformly, must be a minimum of 30,000 CD with the color being vivid red. Last in our list is the self-contained breathing apparatus. What happens if a closed compartment is compromised due to malfunction of equipment and toxic gases such as carbon dioxide are present in it? How will a person diagnose and try to repair and minimize the damage when his breathing is compromised due to the presence of toxic gases? No doubt the person will soon suffer asphyxiation which may lead to unconsciousness and ultimately death. To prevent such a mishap self-contained breathing apparatus are used by personnel entering a closed compartment infiltrated with toxic gases so as to facilitate oxygen supply in that hazardous environment. These are the important life-saving equipment which allows to save the lives of crew and passengers in case of an accident and make a ship safe from the point of view of safety of people. A ship sailing in the middle of the ocean has to be self-sustainable by all means as external aid might take hours to reach the designated site. And when we talk about self-sustainability, safety becomes one of the primary areas of concern. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful, see you in my next video.